In the DreamWorks Dragons franchise, the dragons are fantastical beasts found in a region of the world known as the Barbaric Archipelago. They are powerful reptiles known for their ability to fly and produce fire, although not every dragon can do both and some have neither fire nor flight, but rather they possess obscure and curious abilities. They come in all shapes and sizes with a multitude of species, each different from the other and yet sharing a similar lineage, which brings us to the question. What are their real origins? To get to the answer, we must first take a look at where they are found and their history in that place. So this brings us to the Barbaric Archipelago, which is a group of 70 or more islands and even smaller isles spread out in between. This is the setting for the Viking Sea Kingdoms and villages seen in the Dragons franchise. The exact location of this place is between Greenland and the Norwegian seas. So dragons there and people have been at odds for countless of years and they have battled one another with every single chance they get until Hiccup and the Night Fury called Toothless brought about a new peace. This tells us that the dragons have been in and around these seas for hundreds of years meaning that they have evolved and diversified in the barbaric archipelago probably earlier than even humans made landfall in the islands there. In the original book series by Cressida Cowell, the dragons have a mystical origin. They are not explained through a scientific or a biological perspective, but rather as creatures with a long history on the islands where the story takes place. The dragons in the books are portrayed as ancient and magical beings that have coexisted with Vikings for centuries. In the How to Train Your Dragons film franchise, the dragons are said to have originated from a mystical place called the Hidden World. This is a secret a well-concealed place where dragons live and nest safely. In How to Train a Dragon, The Hidden World, the third and final installment of the film series, released in 2019, it is revealed that The Hidden World is the ancestral home of the dragons, their place of origins. The entrance to The Hidden World is through a caldera, which is a gigantic collapsed volcano in the middle of the ocean. And the only way to enter the caldera is by flying in on a dragon and drop there and it was impossible for humans to reach on their own. The Hidden World is a vast and beautiful underground realm that is a sanctuary for dragons, allowing them to live away from the conflicts with humans. The film explores the idea that dragons, as a species, were drawn to the Hidden World to protect themselves from human persecution. The concept of the Hidden World becomes a central theme in the third movie as Hiccup and Toothless try to find a new home for dragons where they can live peacefully and free from the threats posed by dragon hunters which leads them to their original home. So in the context of the films, the dragon's origins is associated with the hidden world and it plays a crucial role in the conclusion of the trilogy. This concept is unique to the cinematic adaptation and differs from the more mystical and less defined origins presented in Cressida Cowell's original book series. The dragons, however, in the books are considered to be a part of the natural order of the world in which the stories are set. They are depicted as diverse species with unique characteristics and their existence is deeply intertwined with the history and culture of the Viking communities portrayed in the books. Unlike the films, however, there is no mention of a hidden world or a central source from which all dragons originate from. Rather, they are like any other animal groups which have evolved and speciated over the span of millions of years. So, this place, the hidden world, is set within a massive volcanic caldera serving as a portal to an intricate maze of chambers and volcanic tubes beneath the Earth's crust. This subterranean world features bioluminescent fungi, coral, and scintillating crystals creating a visually stunning environment. Waterfalls and pools on coral shelves are formed by water seeping through the cracks in the crust, with heated water turning into steam creating a tropical atmosphere. The hidden world is accessible through a collapsed volcano in the ocean called the caldera which then can only be entered by flying in on a dragon. The caldera leads to a network of caves deep beneath the Earth's crust eventually reaching the mushroom forest characterized by stalactites and stalagmites covered in various mushrooms. The King Island is located at the center of the hidden world serving as the throne room for the King of Dragons which was the Night Fury, uh, Toothless. And in that place is the Alpha's throne being a gigantic crystal overlooking a significant portion of that hidden world. The place is further explored and expanded in the animated series Dragons the Nine Realms, whereby a comet came too close to the Earth and its gravitational anomaly opened a new passage to the hidden world called the Colosseum Fissure. And in the course of the series, 
they liken it to the Nine Realms of Norse Legends. So, what are these Nine Dragon Realms there? The first to be described and seen is the Crystal Realm, accessible through the Colossan Fissure created by the Comet. It features intricate crystalline structures, connected by caves and underground lakes. It is a stable habitat for the Tidal Class Dragons due to its huge and large water sources. Next is the Fire Realm, which is characterized by molten lava and diverse rock formations. The Fire Realm is hazardous and has extreme temperatures. Dragons like the Catastrophic Quakens construct nests within large formations in this treacherous environment. Then next we have the Ice Realm, which is a consistently cold environment with snowy landscapes, blizzards and unique crystals that sustain vegetation. Despite being deep on the ground, it supports a variety of flora and a shimmering aurora borealis. Then next we have the Nature Realm, boasting abundant vegetation, towering trees and carnivorous plants with thick vines. It provides nesting habitats for dragon species like the Sniffle Heights and the Vine Trails and many others. Then we come to the King's Realm, which is an expansive mountainous region with diverse topography, featuring towering peaks, rugged cliffs and a lush environment rich in ancient energy. It has become a beacon of hope for dragons seeking an ideal habitat. The sixth here is the Giant Realm, which has a temperate climate, supporting giant grasses resembling trees and providing ample hiding places. It harbors some of the largest known dragon species and includes a vast sea with tidal class dragons in it. Then next we have the Desert Realm, featuring a vast desert with glass structures created by glass casters. It is distinct with black sand instead of yellow sand and offers a unique landscape within the hidden world. So those are the seven realms firstly. And now the eighth realm is called the Dark Realm, which is a swampy area with thick fogs and red dragon sight illumination. It houses dangerous predators and it is called the underworld of that region. It is a barren section with crystal hills, vapors and minimal water sources. It is also home to the Yorman Gander, which is termed as the World Serpent but in reality was just another gigantic serpentine dragon species. But then again, it is the ultimate predator of all dragons. Then lastly we have something which is called the Bio Realm, which is cavernous with bioluminescent mushrooms and crystals. It hosts a symbiotic relationship with, between crystals and animals and surface dwelling trees also extend their roots deep into its locale. It might also be the entrance into the other realms through the caldera. So this is all that we have about the origins of the dragons and the realms of the hidden world. Anyway, if you like this video then check this other one as well. And if you're more interested in other movie monsters and creatures then Take a look at our channel, we have a lot of things that you might haven't seen before. Like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Take care fam.